Elsa. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even like you hope you people are even able to see my screen. Are you able to see my screen, everyone? It's okay. Thank you, ma'am. Yeah. So let's start the session. Before we're gonna start the session, uh, I just want to give brief introduction over here, right? So we are going to uh, deal with Python workshop. So what is Python? If you learn Python, what are the benefits? What are the jobs are there? So what is the benefit of learning and what is the benefit of going with this workshop? Let's have a glance, right? So coming to the first point here, let us consider, uh, and my name is Bahesh. I'm from Brain Ocean Solutions India Private Limited, right? So coming to the topic. So before we're going to start, so let's have a small introduction about the Python. So the Python has been introduced in the year 1991, right? So it was introduced by Rosam, right? Coming to the next point. Uh, Python is a programming language. It is useful uh, for the small projects to a big project. So from uh, even in a small project, a small capstone project to a large, big, big, big projects. Uh, in all the projects, we can use a Python, right? So Python is being used by many giant companies like Google, Yahoo, YouTube, and so on. Many MNC companies and giant companies are using Python. And second thing coming to the thing, not only companies, even the Linux systems. The Linux systems are being built by the uh, Python language itself, right? Not only the OS, uh, the games, apps, or web applications, the data science applications, whatever you consider. Maximum fields, the Python has been uh, right now. Right now, the Python is being moving into the all the fields, right? So here are the few examples where the top companies are using the Python, Python uh, language, right? So coming to the next thing over here. Uh, so if you learn a Python, let us consider Python uh, is a good. So if you learn Python, what would be the average salary? What is the medium, uh, median salary? What would be the maximum salary, right? So these are what the things when we go with the mi minimum salary, it is uh, 43K dollars, right? So the median is 77K dollars. So when you go with the maximum, it is 103K dollars, right? So in this way, the salary would be range for the Python. The people who learn the Python, they are into N number of fields. Right. So what are the fields? We'll look into that. Right. So this is the thing. This is a basic salary, like basic salary, median salary and average salary. If you learn a Python, it is not going into ring. So what would be happen? We can implement Python in any field. So let's see what are the fields are there in the Python also. All right. So why Python? Because why Python is Python is dynamic, object oriented, modular, active, uh, used for scrapping and used for the machine learning as well as the AI, right? Python is used for all these fields, right? So why, what, uh, why? Because uh, Python has a large number of frameworks. Python is having a large number of frameworks. Using the frameworks, we would be able to build applications, right? So coming to the next point, have to become a Python developer. So what, what jobs are there? So in which field can the Python can be implemented? So if you look over here, Python can be implemented in the robotics, machine learning, uh, like machine learning, data science, AI, right? So developing a desktop applications, developing a mob uh, mobile applications, right? Developing an IoT applications, the cloud applications, and so on. In n number of fields, Python can be used. Uh, Python is not only for the people for the CSE or IT. Python can be used in n number of fields. So what are the fields is? We can use it in the automation, I mean the robots, so the people who are going for the EC, like uh, IoT, in the IoT also nowadays, a pro uh, they are using a programming language, Python, right? So Python is used for the developing of a desktop applications, uh, data science, machine learning, AI, right? So mobile applications and desktop applications and standalone applications, right? So coming to the next topic, so look over here, how to become a Python, like as already discussed in a previous slide. So I said, we can write a system scripting web development, software development. So when you come to system development, uh, system scripting, an application which is used for developing, uh, which is used in the system, for that we go, it has a system scripting. When you come to the web development, Python is used in the web development, for that we do have different modules. So we can use a static website as well as a dynamic website. So coming to the software development,
yeah sorry uh right so let's come back over here right so how to become a uh, python developer we are looking so in this we have considered the three categories so what are the three categories as we have considered the three categories as system uh, scripting web development and software development right so system development we have done so when you go to uh, web development a static website and a dynamic website can be done using the python right so coming to the software development how the python is being used in the software development so it is used for the businesses institutes companies and so on right so in the institutes and companies how it can be used so what uh, what would be happen is this python can be used for the this python can be used for the uh, machine learning it can be used for the machine learning no audible like uh, are people able to see my screen everyone yeah it's okay yes sir yes sir right it's okay thank you all right so coming to the software development what would be happen is using the python we would be building an uh, machine learning application or else ai application what is the ai application is simple like whether the business can be done or not done predicting the future of the business predicting the future of a business like how the python uh, using the python what we are going to do whether that business what was the business in 2006 so in 2020 how the business would be there so what are the required changes whether the business could be run or not run uh, or else so predicting something so for the prediction and for applying the machine learning and detecting the objects uh, like what we can say is designing detecting the objects uh detecting their hand written languages like if you have written using your hand let us consider you have written a small thing on your paper using your hand writing so that can also be computerized so capture a picture of that particular thing use the machine learning and apply uh, the required modules on that so what would be happen then the thing which you have written on over there that would be converted into a digital document right so not only this using in, in many other applications machine learning is being used right machine learning ai and deep learning are being used so in order to go with the machine learning ai and deep learning we require the python right so in this way this python would be helpful for the software development right so for the machine learning for the data science as well as for the ai this python would be used so now uh, let's look into the thing so where the python can be run python can be run on the different platforms not only windows or so on python can be run in a different platforms like linux mac windows and any other distros right so coming to the next thing python is a simple uh, language it is a simple language it is not hard to code it is a simple and simple to code compared to the java and other programming languages python is very easy right so how it is easy we'll see that also uh, right python allows the developers to write a program in a fewer lines so compared to the uh, java or c or other programming languages if you want to write hello world program for the example let us consider we are having a hello world program so in the java it takes around 10 lines so in c around 15 lines let us consider but coming to the python it is in a single line we are going to write right so in this way if you are considering the large codes also uh, the n number of lines can be reduced can be reduced in the python if you are writing 100 lines of code in the java we can reduce it to 20 30 30 lines in python in this way python is being uh, helpful in the programming so that is the reason python is being trendy in the market right so python is an interpreter based it is not a compiler based python is an interpreter based so now let's look that also right so coming to the next benefit over here uh, python is a popularity and high uh, like if you learn python uh, what would be happen you'd be getting a high salary you'd be getting a high salary because there are n number of jobs in python there are n number of jobs in python and the people who know python are less right so coming to the thing python is used in the data science ai ml python is used in the scripting automation python is used in the big data right python even supports the testing coming to the next topic python uh, can be used in graphic uh, computer graphics web development right so next one python is simple and easy to learn so now let's go with the program so now what we are doing this is what about the basic introduction about the python so now what uh, what we are going to do is have to download the python from where to download the python have to install it have to set up it and have to write our first program let's see right so basically uh, in order to download the python there is a url right there is official website of a python that is www.python.org 
from this uh, particular URL, we would be able to download the Python. After downloading the Python, we need to install. After install that, let's look. All right. So this is for the Windows. For the people who are going with the Mac, there is uh, no need to install the uh, Python in the Mac OS. Defaultly, when the OS is been installed, Python would be installed itself. So not only for the Mac OS and the people who are using the Linux OS, also Python would be defaultly installed. No need to install separately. All right. So this is one thing about your uh, Python have to install it. So now uh, we have, we got a clarity like for the Mac OS and uh, Linux OS, no need to install. So now let's go with the process of installing of Python in the Windows. So let us consider we have downloaded the Python from the internet. As soon as you uh, download the Python from the internet, uh, a setup file would be appeared. It is around 30 MB, 27 MB to 30 MB it would be there. All right. So click on the setup file. As soon as you click on the setup file, this screen would be appeared. Right. Right now let us consider uh, the screen has been appeared. So now what we are going to do is we need to install the Python. So for that, what you want to do is click on install now, add Python 3.7 to the path. Select these two options, then click on install now. So what would be happen? Python would be installed in the default directory. Python would be installed in the default directory. So click on next, automatically the Python would be installed. So this is what I call your regular installation. If you want to go with a custom installation, so then in that case, what you're going to do click on the custom installation. So as soon as you click on the custom installation, what would be happen? We can modify the settings. So what are the settings is let's click the custom installation. So coming to the custom installation, what we are going to do here is here to have considered. So whether you want a documentation, whether you want a pip module or not, right? So whether you want TK, uh, TK module and IDL, IDLE, or whether you want the Python test suit, whether you want Python uh, launcher, whether Python should be installed for all the users or not. So here are the n number of options. If you require or if you don't require, just select that option based upon your requirement. Just select the option and click next. So in that way, uh, we'd be able to go with the custom installation. So coming to the next topic, uh, as soon as you click on the next, this screen would be appeared. So when you're going with the screen, what would be happen? You are having here a list of options, like whether the Python should be installed for the multiple users or not. Or else you want all the Python files to be associated with the Python uh, pie launcher or not. Whether you want to create the desktop op uh, desktop icon on the uh, whether you want to create a Python desktop icon or not. So coming to the next one, uh, what are you gonna do? Whether you want to add Python to the environment variable or not, right? Whether you want to predefine compile libraries, whether you want to de uh, download the debugging module, right? So whether you want debugged uh, uh, binaries. So in this way, you'd be selecting the options. Right, so whatever based upon your requirement, you'll select the options and click on install. Right, so before clicking on install, please do uh, look over here. Here, you do have a red color box. So, what is this red color box? Here, when you click on the browse, a directory would be open. A directory would be open. So, select your default directory where your Python should be installed. Whether you want to install in C drive or F drive or D drive or some other drive based upon your system storage. Right, right now I've considered in the C drive some XYZ folder. In that my python would be installed right so let us consider install now so python would be installed right so this is when you go with your custom installation so this is what you would regular installation and custom installation so let's come back over here again so here what would be happen if you have forgotten this option what is that add python 3.7 to the path in case if you have forgotten this particular thing right so we do have a manual process to add python to the environment variable so this is when you go with the regular installation. So coming to the custom installation, if you have forgotten this option here, if you have forgotten this option, like add Python to the environment variables, right? So we do have a manual process, right? Either in the uh, regular or in the custom installation. If you have forgotten this particular format, then in that case, so what we are going to do, we are going to put the Python environment variable manually. How it is that? Let's look. So what we're going to do is on the desktop, we would be able to find an icon called as this PC, right? Or else my computer based upon the OS version with the Windows 7, Windows 8 and Windows 10, you'd be finding an option called as this PC or else my computer, right? So right click on that particular thing, click on the properties. As soon as you click on the properties, a pop-up box would be appeared. 
in the pop-up box towards the left side towards the left side of the screen you'd be able to find this option you'd be able to find this option called as advanced system settings the last fourth option would be there right so click on advanced system settings so what would be up and then this box would uh, like a box would be appeared so in the uh, below right side corner you would be having an option called as environment variables so click on the environment variables this pop up would be appeared so in this pop up what we are going to do is uh, find a thing called as path if you are having a path so click on edit click on edit so you would be where you would be able to add a new path right so if you don't find this particular path so then click on new so when you click on new a box would be appeared so write the variable name as path so in the second location give your python path where your python has been installed where the python has been installed right so coming to the next topic what we are going to do is we need to check where the python has been installed where the python has been installed so as i have already said you uh, where the python would be installed so let, let's see where the python would be installed so i'll show you the documentary over here Uh, for this case, so defaultly Python would be installed in the uh, app data folder. So how to access? So the people who have gone with the reg regular installation, they don't know where the Python has been installed. But the people who have gone with the custom installation, they have selected their own path to where the Python has been installed. So go to that location, right? So now what we are going to do for the people who have installed in the regular installation, right? So coming to the next topic, uh, have to find uh, where your Python has been installed defaultly. So then in that case, type, uh, like not type, press Windows plus R, plus Windows R, run box would be open, run box would be open. In the run box, what will you do is type this command, it called as ampersandile, app data, ampersandile. So what would be happen? Your app data folder would be appeared. So from the app data folder, you'd be able to find three folders. You'd be able to find three folders called as local local roaming and roaming so now what you need to do is you need to navigate your folder called as local right when you go to the folder called as local you'd be able to find n number of folders in the in that local folder you'd be able to find a folder called as program program right so in that folder you'd be able to find a folder called as python right so python thereafter what is the version which you have installed the current version is 3.8.3 Right now, 3.8.5. Right, so like based upon the version, your version name would be displayed over here. So in this particular location, your Python would be there. So in the app data, in the, uh, in the app data folder called as local, in that you would be having a folder called as programs, in that uh, a folder called as Python. There you would be able to find your Python version. So this is your Python installed location. So after doing this, what you people need to do is so let us consider this is what my directory for the example so copy this address let us consider my python has been installed over here copy this address after copying this address what you're going to do is come back to a previous slide so in this slide as i already said you to click on path in the path i've said you to go with uh, first first box you'll be clicking on path so in the second part uh, second box paste the thing as which you have copied where your python has been installed copy that location and paste it here so what would be happen so let, let us consider uh, in c drive in this folder my python has been installed so i have paste this so i'll click on ok so in this way i would be able to add my path i'd be able to add my python environment variable to my path right so this is the same for the windows 7 windows 8 and windows 10 same process would be there right so you need to click on path edit so add this particular thing copy the uh, copy the python install location and paste it so click on ok so as soon as you click on ok the python uh, environment, environment variable would be added so this is how we add your python environment variable so coming to the next topic we are going to deal with ideally so right now we have successfully installed python after installing successfully python uh, we are going to deal with uh, ideally as soon as you install the python you would be able to get the ideally in the ideally you can write the programs right so this is how the ideal would be there. So in this, we will be start writing our code and presenter, the program would be executed there itself.
right so this is for the windows people for the linux and mac os people the ideally would be in this particular format right so write your code and press enter the code would be executed there itself right so this is when you go with your ideally so right now we are not using any ideally or else any ide any integrated development environment we are not going to use so as we are in a basic learning stage so we need, we don't require any help of them right if you are taking help of any ideally id so what would be happen id would be giving you the suggestions so let us consider you are writing a print so if you are writing a print so what all the other things are there with the p so what are the other things are there with h all the uh, what do you say suggestions suggestions would be given by the ide itself so when we are using the ide we'd be not able to remember the complete code so that is the reason i don't suggest to use the ide when we are in the basics so then how to write without the ide how to write a program yes we can write a program without the ide also so what we are going to do here is simply consider a notepad in the notepad we'd be writing our program right so we'd be saving it after that we'd be executing in the terminal how to write the first program let's look over here right so for every uh, programming language the basic program is hello world so let's see how to write the hello world program i consider this program as hello world uh, so this is what my hello world program so simple a single line of code print hello world hello world would be printed right so let's write the program and check it so right now what am i doing on the desktop i'm creating a folder like what are the folder you want you can create so right now i am uh, i have a folder called as python examples so i'm going over here so whatever you feel what are the location c drive or e drive or f drive go with your location right so go to that particular folder click on new right click click on new click on the text document as soon as you click on the text document uh, a text document would be open so this is how your text document would be appeared now what you are going to do over here is consider this thing so here start writing your program right now i'm writing the program print hello world simply let's like write print so when you write a print statement what would be happen it would be able to print the line which you have considered so now i'm going with print hello world so write print open the brackets give the quotations close the brackets so in between this what are the statement you want to consider write the statement right now i have considered as a hello world so right hello world would be printed right so coming to the first thing now what i'm going to do is i want to save this document so how should i save this document so here you'd be having an option called uh, file uh, when you click on file the fourth option would be as save as so right now click on file save as right so according to windows i'm saying so like here you'd be having a two boxes according to the windows so in the first box type your file name let us put it as some hello so what are the file name you want to put consider your file name right so right now i'm putting it as uh, h e l l o hello hello is my file name so what is the extension i'm going to save the extension for the python is dot py so your python would be saved so hello is your file name dot py is your extension so select that so click on save so you'd be able to save that particular file all right so right now i have saved this so when i come back to my folder you can go over here right now my file has been created it is in the python icon right so how do you execute it so if you click double click you can't execute so a flash uh, a splash screen would be appeared and it would be displayed uh, what does it it would be uh, displayed and it will collapse again so in that way you are not going to execute your python so then how to execute it so in that case what you are going to do is right now i'm closing this program in the address bar in the address bar itself uh, deselect all these things make it empty make it empty and type cmd and press enter so what would be happen if you type cmd and press enter your command prompt would be open from this particular directory so you can see here right now desktop in that i'm having a folder called as python so it has been opened in this specific directory so in the same way what would be happen what are your directories a d drive or c drive so automatically your command prompt would be open from that particular directory so right now i have opened my command prompt from this directory so right what i'm going to do is uh, in order to execute my uh, program first of all what i need to write is python i'm saying like i'm executing a python program 
I'm saying to the command prompt. So that is the reason Python space. So in the Python, what you're going to execute? So right now my file name is hello. So hello dot py. So as soon as I click hello dot py, what would be happen? My statement has been printed. It says hello world dot py. Sorry, I have said like hello world dot py. So hello world is being executed. Right. So this is how you execute your programs. So this is how you execute your program. Right now I've considered Python space your file name dot py. So what are the statement is it that has been executed over here. So now let's do the modification. So what I want to do here is I'll open the program. So instead of hello world, I'll write it as Brino vision. Save this. I'll come back to my terminal. Come back to my terminal. Python space my file name hello dot py. So automatically the program would be executed. Right. So is it clear for everyone right now? Uh, I hope I'm clear with uh, uh, for everyone till here. So this is how we execute your first program. Am I clear till here everyone? Yeah, it's okay. Uh, I'm clear. So now coming to the no topic over here, what I do is uh, let's uh, go with the other programs. So as soon as we have done with the hello world program, we do have the other programs. So what is the hello world program? Let's look over here. So this is a documentary like how you're going to save your file. So this I have already showed you right now. So in the first like open your text document, save it, how to save your text document, how to execute it here have considered that right. So now going to the next topic, what I'm doing here is uh, I considered the other program called as variables. So what are the variables? Simply uh, in a simple line, variables are the containers. Variables are the containers which store the data. Right, so variables are the containers which store the data. Right, so look over here. Uh, simply let us consider this as a variable. So now for the let us consider this as a variable over here. So now what I'm doing, I need to name this variable. So I am naming it as some uh right now. This variable name is let us consider it as a. So this container name is called as a so now in this container what is the data I'm storing so I'd be storing any kind of data so let us consider if I want to store five I can store five if I don't want to store five if I want to write the Mahesh so I'll be storing it as Mahesh or else if I want to store any flow uh, any value like float so simply I'll go with 5.6 so in this way it is a container which stores a different kind of data right so this is called as a variable so what is a variable and have to declare a variable have to store the values in a variable. Let's see according to our programming. So right now I'm going back to hello.py. So I erase this program. So right now my variable name is a. So simply you need to declare your variable name. So according to other programming languages, what we used to consider is first of all, we need to declare the data type. So like C or Java inch a. So my data type is inch. My variable name is a. So if I want to assign a value, I'd be considering a is equal to phi. So they have a semicolon. This was for the other programming languages. But coming to the Python, the code has been reduced. So no need to write. No need to write the int over here. Simply declare a variable. Declare a variable. Give the equal to assign your value. Whatever the value you want, assign your value. Right now I've assigned as one, two, three. Right? No need to declare the semicolon also. Right? No need to declare the semicolon also. So, sir, why you select not to uh, put the int over there? Basically, what would be happen if you declare a variable? So, it will consider the variable. Python will consider it as a variable. So, thereafter, based upon the value which you have given, so it automatically converts this uh, variable to okay, this value is integer. 
So I need to assign an int over here. So if you're giving a float, it will assign a float. Automatically, it will convert that uh, variable into so and so data type. So what it has been considered, how it has been considered, let's look. Right now, I have created a variable over here. In this, I'm storing an integer, right? So I save this program. So in order to print this variable, so what I need to do, I need to write print, print A. I simply consider print A. So I save this document. I save this document, right? So come back to my terminal, uh, Python space, your file name. Uh, right now, hello.py. So the statement, like what are the values there? So one, two, three is there. One, two, three has been printed, right? So one, two, three has been printed over here. So like you can see the output, it is one, two, three. So this is how you declare the integer. So coming to the next point here, I want to declare the other value. Right now, let us consider a variable called as x. x is equal to, in the variable x, I am storing a value. Uh, the value is float value. So I want to store it as 5.4. So 5.4 is a float value. In the variable x, I am storing a float value. So print. So thereafter, in the next line, print x. So 5.4 would be printed. 5.4 would be printed. Right, so coming to the next topic, uh, I consider uh, the other variable. So the variable name is, uh, let us put it as what I do. Uh, let me consider the variable as y. y is equal to, uh, I consider a string right now. I want to store a string. So right now I declare it as a brain over version. So this is what the variable, I close it. So in the variable y, I'm storing a string. So in order to declare a string, you need to present it in the quotations, right? So whatever you're giving the quotations, that will be considered as a string. So I save this program. So in order to declare this integer, no need to declare the quotations or no semicolon. Same for the float, no quotations or else no semicolon. So this is for the float value. So when you go with a string, so given the quotations and the double quotations or else, like let us consider Z. Z is also my different variable. Z is equal to, even in the single quotations, I can declare. So I declare a name over here, like string over here, right? So I close it. So this is what one string, and this is also another string. So string can be declared in the double quotations or else in a single quotations. Uh, in the single quotations, uh, we can declare a string. So I save this program. If I want to print all these variables, so simply I'd be writing, print y so print z so what would be happen this particular variables would be printed so let's come back to our terminal and re-execute the program so you can see here one two three has been printed five four five point four brain ovation and bala maheshwar in this way this has been printed so this is how you consider variables so this is how you I add the different values over here, right? So coming to the next topic, what I want to declare here is, sir, why you have considered A, B, C, D? Can't you consider any variables? Like, can't you consider any other name? So what are the rules? What are the set of protocols to be followed for creating a variables? Let's look into that, right? So let's come back to the PPT over here, right? So this is what about the variables, right? So look over here. So what we're going to do is, we are going to consider the variables. How to declare your variables are? So first one, a variable name must start with a letter or an underscore. It should be start with a letter or else an underscore. So coming to the next point, it can't be started with a number. It can't be started with a number. The third point, a variable can only contain alpha numeric characters and underscore, but no any other special character. While you are declaring a variable, you need to use uh, alphabets like uh, the alpha and numeric characters or else a special character as underscore. Rather than this, you can't use any other symbol for creating your variable. Right? So that is for the third point. So coming to the fourth point, what would be a pen? Variable names are case sensitive. So what are case sensitive? If you declare a variable like age, if you are writing completely in the lower case, this is one variable. So if you go within this particular format, capital A and GE or in the lower case, 
so then this would be acting as an, a new variable these both variables are not same so when you come to the capital h a g e everything on the capital case so then in that case what would be happen this would be also considered as another variable all these three variables are not same right so these three variables like these three things would be acted as three different variables so this is how you go with your variable namings this is how you go with your variable naming so coming to the next topic over here uh, so what can be happen so here are the few examples few examples of creating the variables right so let's look into that through the programming right so the last one which have uh, missed over here is the variable let us consider if you want to put two names together if you want to put two names together as a single variable then you are putting it as bala space mahesh then that can't be considered as a variable it would be giving you an error so if you want to put two uh, two names together as a single variable so then you need to join you need to join its two variables so how you are going to join is simply put underscore simply put the underscore in between the uh, letters so let's look over here so i come back to the program let us consider here i am having a uh, variable so what i want to put let us consider my variable name is my variable so this is what my variable name i want to consider so if i put in this way i'm assigning a value called as 5 so what will be happen if i run this program i'd be getting an error because you can't declare in this way so in order to remove this error so i need to place an underscore in between them i'm declaring an underscore so then this completely would be considered as a single variable right so it could be considered a single variable and now what i'm going to do here is i save the value so now what i want to do here the other condition what we have considered a variable can be considered with underscore underscore uh, bov so this is what my variable so i want to show some value like 7.2 i'm showing 7.2 so even i can consider the other thing what has said you so if i go with an example called as uh, bov right so this would be a new variable this is another variable this would be acting as another variable right bov is equal to i put it to uh, 8.2 so now bov 9.2 so i'll consider uh, bov i'll put it as ball so save it so now what would be happen this three variables would be acting as three different variables this three things would be acted as three different variables right so we are able to variable so this is how you declare but you can't declare a variable name with a starting of 9 so let us consider you are declaring any number over here 9 equal to so mahesh or some other thing what would be happen if you declaring in this way you would be getting an error a number can't be declared as a variable right so that is what the points four points when you have considered the variables right so this is fine this is about your creating of your variables so if you want to print those variables simply consider uh, open statement print bov right to so save this program uh, i want to print all the variables underscore bov this first variable over here underscore bov and bov as a capital bov and all these things are over here the capital over here so now i'll be considering this into the capital bov i save this program so this is how i declare my variables so this is how i declare my variables i save this come back to my terminal i execute back so all the things will be printed so this is how you consider so this is how you consider your variables and this is how you print them this is how you print them so coming to the next topic over here so in this way you can consider any variable name and you can put but what are the other rule is the keywords the reserved keywords can be used the reserved keywords can be used as a variables so according to any programming language keywords would be there we need to mark up the keywords right so what are the keywords so declaring of variables we have done so what you have considered is so i'll show you over here uh, that's fine so what would be happen is for any programming language keywords would be there this keywords can be used as a variables 
so there are around 30 to 35 keywords based upon the programming language we need to mug up them we need to mug up them but according to python no need to mug up so what we can simply do is just we need to write a two lines of code so if you write the two lines of code the complete keywords which are there in the python that would be printed so let's look over here right now i did all this program so print sorry before printing let's go uh, import i need to import a module called as keyword keyword so thereafter print keyword dot aw list so i save this program so what would be happen only two lines of code import keywords now i'm importing a module called as keywords so i'm saying print keyword dot kw list so as soon as i execute this program so what would be happen the list of keywords which are there in the python that would be printed so see here so these are all the keywords remembering of this all keywords is a little bit hard remembering all these keywords is a little bit hard why so the python people what they have done they have introduced a model called a uh, module called as keyboard not keyword it's a keyword so import keyword so keyword module would be imported so from that particular module what i am doing here is uh, i'm just printing uh, the keywords so in order to print the keywords i have a predefined method so that is called as uh, keyword dot kw list keyword dot kw list so what would be happen the list of keywords which are there that would be printed so here are the list of keywords this list of keywords can be used as a variable names we can't use this variables sorry we can't use this as a variable names so coming to the point uh, point over here false none and true so these three things would be the capital so if you look over here in the f sorry in the false f would be the capital so when you go with the none n would be the capital right so so coming to the next one t t would be the uh, true t would be the capital so in this way these three things are the capital and rest all other are the uh, lower case itself so this is what about the printing of keywords no need to remember the complete keywords just simply write the two lines of code the list of keywords would be printed right so this keywords this keywords can be this keywords can be used as a uh, variable names right so coming to the point over here uh, this is what about the keywords so coming to the next program so here uh, i have declared the variables right so coming to this variables what i want to do like we have done with this list of keywords so now using uh, let us consider uh, i'm having three variables called as x y and z for all these variables i want to assign a single value i can write in this way x equal to 5 y equal to 5 and z equal to 5 so what i'm going to do here is i will be considering this program 5 5 5 so here three lines are there right so three lines are there in the three lines so i want to print x y z i will be printing so that's fine but i want to reduce the number of lines of code so all these things are having same values so then in that case what would be happen according to the python what we can do is if everything if every variable has having a same value so then in that case i would be considering x equal to y equal to z equal to 5 a single line i'm declaring for this three variables i'm declaring a, a value as 5 so simply what i do print x print x uh, print z what would be happen this three times so three times 5 would be printed so in the x what is the value z in the y what is the value z in the z what is the value z that would be printed so let's clear the screen for the time being so i'm executing the program back again so when i print x i'm getting 5 so when i'm printing y i'm getting 5 so when i print the y uh, z again i'm getting the 5 over here right so this is what the topic when i'm going with the variables right so uh, i hope i'm clear till here right so coming to the next topic coming to the next topic what i want to uh, going to do here is so let us consider right now sir all the values you have declared uh, statically so if in case i want to collect the values from the user in then what should i do right
So we need to write a long program. In the other programming languages, Java and C, we used to use like scan of scanner equal to new scanner dot so on. In this way, you'd be writing a lines, right? But according to the Python, no need to write like that. We are having a built-in function. Built-in function is there. If you use a built-in function, what would be happen? We would be able to collect the values from the user end. So right now, I don't want to declare the value as five. I want to collect the value from the user end. So so then in that case, what would I do? Simply, I load a function called as input of. So what would happen when I use this input function? It would be able to collect the data from the user end. So I save this program. We come back and I run it. As soon as I run this program, look over here. Python space your file name dot py. It's simply waiting. The cursor is being waiting. So why it is waiting? Because we have used a function called as input. Input is a function used to get the data from the user end. So now as soon as I execute the program, now it is waiting from the it is waiting for the value from the user end. So I'll simply type it as hi. So hi would be collected. I would be collected right now. I got hi. So what is happening? First one, it is being collected. In the second line, the value is being printed again. So here I've considered a variable called as x. X is equal to input. So now in this input, user will pass a data. So now here, what is happening? Now here, user would be printing the data, like not the user, the program would be printing the data. So this is how you collect the data from the user end, right? So, but here again, I have a doubt, sir. As soon as I execute the program, the cursor is being blinked. I don't know like whether this program has executed or is it, it is waiting for the input. I don't know. So then in that case, what should I do? I should pass a message for the user. So what will I do? Simply I'd be considering a program. So before this uh, print, simply I'll write print enter your name. I can this particular thing and save it. So as soon as I save it, what would be happen? So look over here. First, this program would be executed and user would be getting an uh, statement. Enter your name. Then user got a clarity. Okay, I need to enter the name. So simply he will enter as Mahesh. So simply Mahesh should be printed. So in this way, we'd be able to prompt, right? So this is what one process or else the other thing, what you're going to do is what you're going to do is without writing the print statement. So I want to prompt a message for the user. So then in that case, what would I do is I delete this line. So in the input function itself, in the input function itself, I pass a statement in the quotations. I'll say, uh, Please enter your name. So, what other thing you want, right? You can consider. I save this program, come back to the terminal, and execute it. So, as soon as I write, what would be happen? It says, okay, uh, I need to collect the value from the user end. So, please enter your name. So, I print it as hi. Hi would be printed. So, this is how you consider the value from the user end. So this is how you collect the value from the user end. So I save this program, like come back to the other program. So what you're gonna do here is, let's check with the other program, what are you left with, right? So the user values you have considered. So A equal to input of. So let's see with this type. So what is this type of? Let's look over here, right? So when I'm going with this type of, so what would be happen, I have all, So what are the other previous programs here? Uh, let us consider a value called as x, x equal to five. So y is equal to, let us store some value. Uh, y is equal to, I um, want to store it as 7.2. So let us consider, uh, I'm storing a variable called as v. So random variables, v is equal to, uh, let us put it as a Mahesh. Right, so let us put this other variable called as a. A is equal to in the quotations. I'm putting it as brain vision, right? So as we know, like uh, phi is an integer, one point is a float. So D is uh, an string. Again, uh, what do I say? A is a string. I know, but what the program has been understood. So I want to know that. So then in that case, I'm not printing the variables. So I want to check what the Python has been understood, whether it is considered as a string or else an integer or float. I want to check with that. So in order to check with that, what I'm going to do here is I'm using 
print. So in the print, I'm using a function called as type of. Type of, like in the brackets, I'm declaring the variable name. I go with type of x. So I save this program for only this particular variable. I'm checking what is the data type has been assigned. Right, so I save this program and execute back. So Python space your file name dot py. It says the class is integer. Right, so for, for this particular variable, this variable is storing an integer. It is saying in this particular way. So what I want to do in this way, I want to check for the, all the variables. So I consider this particular thing. So type of y. So for y, what is the data is there? Like what is the class has been there for that particular thing? So for z and for, uh, sorry, that is not there, d and for a, I save this. So come back to my terminal, I re-execute the program. Now you can check here. It says, first one is an integer, second one is a float, third one is a string, and fourth one is a string. So in this way, we can check what is the data type has been assigned by the Python to that particular variable. So in order to check the variable, so what do I say is, in order to check the data type that has been assigned by the Python, then we are using the type function, type of variable name. So what would be a pen? So what is the data type has been assigned? That would be printed. So when you go with the type of function. So coming to the next line over here, what I'm gonna do here is, so as I've already said you, so what are the things you're declaring the quotation? That would be considered as a string. So let's do right now. So what I'm doing here, so let us consider a variable called as b. b is equal to, in the quotations, I'm, daily, uh, I'm writing it as 5.4. Right, so now 5.4 is integer. We know it. It is an integer. But what am I doing? I am placing it in the quotations. So what would be a pen? Whether it would be a string or else. Whether it would be a string or an integer. So let's check that. So in order to check with that, print type of B. So save it. So now what is a particular data type has been assigned? So whether it is a string or integer, let's check it right now. Right, so as soon as I execute the program, it says class is string. So why like that? You have declared an integer, but it's saying as a string. Yes. What would be happened is uh, whenever you're going with, whenever you're going with a variable, uh, what is the variable? Like take any variable. If that variable is placed in the quotations, then it is to be considered as a string. So whatever the data you're giving the quotations, it would be considered as a string itself. Whether you're giving an integer or a float or some value. So whatever it may be. It will consider it as a string itself. So I do change the program to five, not five. Uh, let us put it as some large number. So this is an integer. I save this, come back to terminal, and I execute it. So now you'd be able to see the class is string. So whatever the data it may be, if you're giving in the quotations, either in the double quotations or single quotations, so what would be happen? It would be considered. It would be considered as a uh, string. Uh, string itself. So this is what the topic when we go with the type of function. So this is how we check what is a variable that has been assigned. Sorry, what the data type has been assigned to the variables, right? So now coming to the uh, other program. So what we are going to do is let us consider. Let us consider the program called as type casting. So what is type casting? So let's look into the PPT over here. So we have done with this variables. So coming to this particular thing, user values also we have done. So coming to the typecasting. So what is typecasting? So when you go with this typecasting, simply typecasting would be considered as converting of one data type to other data type. Typecasting is nothing but converting a, uh, one data type to other data type is known as typecasting, right? So what we can do here is let's see a program. So here I'm doing the typecasting. So here I've considered a variable called as A. In the A, I'm storing in the uh, integer. So I have considered the variable called as uh, B. In the B, I'm storing 7.2. At the float value, I'm storing in the B. So coming to the C. Right now, my variable is C. In the C, I'm storing a uh, string. Right, so now what I'm doing here, here I've considered two functions. So what are the, these are also built-in functions. One is float, one is int, and one is str. So what would be happen using these functions? We can go with the type casting. So what would be happen if you want to convert a required data into float? So go with float. 
if you want to convert that into an integer going with an inch so let's uh, look into this program over here so let us consider right now this variables so right now what do you people know when i'm going with 5 it is printing as a uh, inch when i go with 7.0 it is printing it as an uh, what do i say float so this is as a string so what i want to do here i want to do the type casting so what is the type casting i want to consider simply i would be considering um, a variable right now let us consider some uh, variable as um, f over here f is equal to what am i doing here is for this variable right now this integer is there i want to convert this integer to a float value so what do i do float of the bracket i'll be declaring the variable name so what would be happen when i use this function called as float of so it will convert the data into the float so right now here i've passed a, a data called as 5 so like the variable called as x so in the x i'm having an integer this integer would be converted into a float right so this is what the thing when you go with the type casting converting of integer into a float so what i want to do i want to convert this integer to string right so then in that case what can i do here is i'd be simply considering it as a uh, other variable called as g g is equal to uh, str of str of i'll be considering str of x so what would be happen this integer would be converted into a string right so either this format or else so i'll go with uh, x is equal to in the quotation i'll declare the file now this would be considered as a string either i can go in this format or else in this format i'll be going right now i delete this so now what i want to do i want to check so when i convert this file into float what is being printed when i convert this g into uh, like when i convert this uh, file into an int uh, string what is being printed let's look over here right now so i convert this program let's print print uh, f so f would be printed print uh, i declare now or like don't confuse i'll be deleting all these programs so right now i've declared f equal to float of x this value would be uh, converted into a float like this would be converted into string so print f print g so save it now what would be happen let's re-execute the program as soon as i re-execute the program you'd be able to look so now when i convert the float when i convert that first in, uh, integer into float it is being printed as 5.0 when i convert it into the string 5 is being simply printed so i got it out again uh, if i use the integer again it is being printed so when i use the string also it is being printed as a 5 so now let's check the data type so in order to check with this data type what i want to gonna do here is I'd be simply considering type of, right? Uh, now what I want to do, I know right now this variable is having integer. So I will check with these three variables. So what are these three variables right now? I'll put it as a x first one integer. So after converting uh, into float, I'm storing into variable called as f. f is equal to, I'd be considering it is into g. Save it. So now check with the three data types. So when I go to three data types, what would be happen? First one, float has uh, defaultly float has been printed, so string has been printed. So now I'm checking the data type. First one, it is an integer. Defaultly it was integer. So when I convert into float, it is saying it as float. So when I convert into a string, it is saying it as a string. So this is the process how you convert an integer to the uh, float as well as a string. So coming to the next topic, what you are going to do here is the uh, so same thing I have considered. So now I'll right now change the value. What I want to do here, let us consider I'm having a float value, right? So I want to convert this float value into an integer. So then in that case, what am I doing here? Instead of float, I be simply writing it as int, int of x. So what would be happen? Whatever the data is there in the x would be converted to an integer. So it would be converted into a string. I save this program and I re-execute it back. So now what does it says? It simply says, first one look over here. Phi has been printed. Why the phi has been printed? Simply phi has been uh, converted. Phi has been converted to an integer. So the rest of all the other values which are there, 5.4, that 0.4 has been removed, and the only specific integer value phi is being printed. All right. So this is what the topic when you go with the uh, integer. So coming to the next topic. 
string. So what actually happened over here? Here I've considered uh, x is equal to so on. Uh, x is equal to so on. So this 5.4 has been removed. So now 5 is being printed in the f. So when I go with str, automatically this is being converted into a string and the complete string is being printed. So when I check with the data type, it is saying first of all it was given to the float. So when you do the typecasting, it has been converted an integer. So thereafter it has been converted to the string. So this is how you go with the typecasting. So this is how you go with the typecasting. Right. So coming to the next program over here, what would be happen? I would be considering. I'd be considering an extra program. So what the next program is? Uh, input we have done. So after going with this input, what I want to do here simply if I want to convert the data from the uh, let us go with the operators right now. So this is what about the typecasting. So after typecasting, we need to go with the users typecasting. So what are the data is being given from the user end? So right now I delete this all the program. So now what I'm going to do here is let's check you right now. I consider the input function input of enter name. I close this, I save it. So as soon as I save it, now let's check. I'm not printing a value, I'm just checking the data type. So I re-execute the program right now. So enter A. So right now I enter hi. So it says string. So I'm re-executing the program. Enter A. I'm entering it as 56. It says string. So I re-execute the program. Now enter as 5.4 string. So what would be happening here? What's actually happening? Whatever the data which are passing from the input function that will only be considered that will be considered as a string itself that would be considered as a string itself right so that is the reason if you want to collect only an integer from the user end so then you need to go with the typecasting for the input function then you need to go with the typecasting for the input function so what is the typecasting is let's look over here so simply what do i do i'll simply pass it as int of input of so what would be happen right now the user can enter only integer rather than if any other num integer if is entering any number he will be getting an error so enter uh, a so if i enter high it says it gives me an error invalid literal passed right so this is what the error so in this way i can't get the string right now right so when i use the input function i'm getting any kind of data when i do the type casting int of input of now i will be able to collect only an integers so if i go with something like now i'll enter 5 45 it will accept so it says the class is an integer so first thing only you people know so when you want to collect the float value float of input of save this particular function come back and execute it so when you execute what would be happen then you would be able to give the float value so what is the float value i execute the program so it's asking to enter the uh, value. If I enter high or some other thing, it gives invalid literal passed because this string can't be converted into a float. Right. So coming to the next topic, what I want to do here, let me consider it as a five. So it will accept because five can be converted into 5.0. Right. So when I give 4.5, it will accept. Right. So it says it is a float. Right. So this is how you go with the type casting. So what the thing you need to remember is strings sorry what do i say this string can be converted to an integer the string can be converted into a float so when that what is the thing is when you go with the type casting string can be converted i mean when you're passing a characters like a b c d that can be converted to an integer as well as the float so this is the topic when you deal with the type casting right so this is uh, i think i'm clear till here everyone right so coming to the next topic uh, i clear the screen so now let's go with the program called as operators. So let's go with the operators over here. Uh, clear the screen uh, with the operators. Yeah. So this is what about the type casting. So two types we have done using the variables, using the input functions. We have done with the type casting. So coming to the next topic, uh, the comments. So how to place the comments? Let us consider. I want to place this code in the comments. Simply, I'll put it as a hash. So if I put a hash that uh, code would be considered into the comment that line will be considered into the comment so this is how you place a single line comments so if you want to place a multiple lines so simply put multiple times hash so all this will be considered as a comments 
so this is what one thing so coming to the next topic what i actually was doing over here is i am considering i want to put the multi line comments so either in this format i can do or else open the quotations for three times right so wherever you want let us consider you have written the print statement for the n times not only print statement what are the code you consider n number of times are there so all this two should be placed in the uh, comments so simply open the quotations over here at the last where you want to uh, close the uh, comments so there declare the triple quotations again so then all these things should be considered as a comments so if i want to print this line i put over here right now put it to uh, instead of this one i'll put it as high like don't mind so because that i have put that in the comments so simply print i right so now high would be printed all these things would be considered into the comments so let's execute and check when i execute the program high is being printed so the rest all of the program is being not printed so this is how you place the multiple line comments and single line comments so even i don't want this to be executed so i'll put a single line comment over here i'll put a hash so in this way i'd be able to place the comments over here so now nothing is being printed so this is what the topic about the comments right so this is what about the comments coming to the next topic over here i consider the other program so what is the other program over here so the type casting we have done so comments we have done so single line comments would be declared with the hash multiple line comments would be declared with the uh, quotations over here right so coming to the next program keywords we have already gone to a uh, program called as keywords right so these are the list of keywords so this is what the code for the printing of keywords so coming to the next line operators so what are the operators there are the basic operators so what are the basic operators let's look over here i can see the operators so what i'm doing here is i come back to my program i read all the code so now here i've declared a variable called as phi i've declared a variable called as phi so i'm storing phi sorry a uh, variable called as a in that i'm storing a value called as phi so coming to the next line i declare a value called as b in the b i'm declaring it as 15 so coming to the next line so what i've done here i'm going with the operators so what are the operators here i have considered the basic arithmetic operators so what are the basic arithmetic operators let's look over here c is equal to a plus b d is equal to a minus b right e is equal to uh, a star b like multiplication and the remainder and the division i'm considering so in the different variables i'm storing the different operators so the sum of two numbers i'm printing a string string along with the variable i'm printing a string along with the variable so the sum of two numbers the div uh, the difference i mean this uh, subtraction of two numbers multiplication division reminder i'm printing right now so these are my variables i come back and i execute it python space your file name dot py the sum of two numbers is 20 the difference of two numbers the multiplication the division and uh, what is it the reminder so in this way you'd be getting this particular things right so this is when you go with the operators so in this way you're having the other operators like uh arithmetic operators logic operators assignment operators bitwise operators like uh and the other thing is uh memberships so in this way there are different operators in this way there are the different operators right so when you go with this uh operators uh what would be happen we would be able to work with the operators so here is a list of the program with the operators when you go with it so uh, uh, let me show you that arithmetic operators right so here are the operators program so what would be happen slash slash uh double slash so on so these are the list of operators let me even show you the doc uh, documents Right, so here are the list of operators. So we have gone with this basic assignment or uh, operators, like uh, the automatic operators we have gone right now. These are the automatic operators. So the other operators are 
assignment operators we are having the same thing we'd be using the uh, operator some example syntax and what would be the output so these are what about the assignment operators right so coming to the next one here i've considered right so assignment operators after the assignment operators we do have a comparison operators after that we are having a logical operators so thereafter we do have the memberships and so on right so this is what about your operators right so coming to the next topic uh, let's deal with the control statements so what are the control statements how to write the control statements let's look so when you go with the control statements we are having so we are having uh, in the control statements we are having a uh, things like if if and else so if elif else and the nested if we are having so we are having the nested if concept when we go with this so these are what the things when you go with the uh, control state uh, conditional statements conditional statements are simply to be considered as if condition if else condition else if condition and nested if condition so now let's see the pro, uh, a program about the if condition so what am i doing here is simply let us consider a variable so right now the variable is a a is equal to 5 so what i'm doing here so i'm placing an if condition if if a is equal to equal to 5 so colon so there is no need to declare the brackets there is no need to declare the flower brackets or so on so i'll be writing my condition over here condition colon so till here my condition has been done so if you want to place a block of statements if you want to place a block of statements in the block if you want to place a block of statements in this particular thing so what we are doing here is i consider a uh, Uh, intendation. What is the intendation? Four spaces. One, two, three, four. Four spaces are considered as a uh, intendation. So. Let me declare one, two, three, four. I save this program. Print i. So in this way, I'll be declaring uh, for this particular program. Uh, print i. I consider so four spaces should be given. This is what the concept about the indentation. Uh, I save it. So if you want to declare the multiple statements in the if condition, simply give the indentation. One, two, three, four. Print again. Uh, what are the statement you want to consider? Uh, write your statements and close it. So in this way, uh, the list of things, the list of things will be considered. Right now, uh, I save this. So if I want to come out right of the if condition, so I need to start writing the program from the left, uh, starting of the line. So print. I am out of. Uh, I am out of what do I say? I am out of the if condition. So in this way, I'll be considering. Close it and I save it. Save it. So now this is what the thing. Now come back to the program and execute it. Python space your file name dot py. So simply hi Mahesh. And these conditions are being printed. So now, what would be happen if this condition is satisfied? Then only this block of code would be executed. If not, this block of code uh, would not be executed. Right. So this is what the condition. So coming to the next one, uh, what I want to do here, I want to change the value and check. So instead of five, if I put it to uh, eight, save this program, come back and re-execute it. So now, what would be happen? Only I am out of the if condition that is being printed. Why? Because this condition is not satisfied. If this condition is not satisfied, then this block of statements will not be executed. Will not be executed. So this is what about the if condition. Am I clear with the if condition, everyone? 
I hope I'm clear with the if condition. Yeah. Right, so that is what about the program. So now coming to the next topic. Uh, so coming to the next topic, what I want to uh, do is uh, see the other programs over here. So here I consider uh, if condition, half the if condition will be executed, half the else condition will be executed. Right, so let's see the program. Right, so if the condition is true, if the condition is true, then the block of statements will be executed. If the condition is false, then the default statement which you have considered, that statement would be printed. This is when you go with the if condition, right? So coming to the uh, program, in this way, we'll be writing the syntax for the if condition. If condition, give the intention, write the block of quotes over here and execute it, right? So now going back to the program of here, I consider the same thing. Uh, let us see for the condition for the if else. So if else, what would be happen is if this condition is not satisfied, then the else block would be executed. So then in that case, else colon your block of statements, give four spaces, intendation, print i, the value of a, the value of a is not equal to five. So if a value of a is not equal to five, then this block of statement would be executed. If not, the else block one, uh, will not be executed. So let's save this program and execute it. So right, so the value of a is not equal to five. The if condition has been not satisfied, uh, not satisfied. So that is the reason we are not able to, we are not able to print the if condition. If only the else block is being printed. So this is what the concept about the uh, if condition, if and else, right? So in this way, we'd be dealing, uh, dealing up with the other programs. So what are the other programs over here? So let us consider else also, like elif will be in the same way. So elif, instead of else, what you'd be doing, you'd be writing the elif, l. You'd be writing the elif, so what are the condition you want to place? If a is equal to equal to, uh, like what do I say, if a is equal to equal to h, then this block would be executed, right? So if a is, is equal, not equal to h, then default the else block would be executed, else, I save this uh, the value of a is not equal to five or h. So this is what the topic. So save this program. So now I execute it. So now what would be happen based upon the value? Based upon the value, the program would be printed. The value of uh, a is not equal is equal to h. So the value of a is equal to h. So that is the reason this block is being executed, right? So now the else block is being not executed. So based upon the value, if this condition is satisfied, then it will not check the other conditions. If it is not satisfied, it will move to the next two one, right? So in the next one, what would be happen? Uh, if this condition is satisfied, then this block of statements will be executed, right? Uh, if this block, uh, if this block is not satisfied, then simply it will go to the default else block and that would be printed. So in this way, we will be going with the value as 25 over here. So the first condition is not satisfied. Second condition is not satisfied. So then defaultly, the else block would be executed. So in this way, the n number of conditions you want to put, you can consider in the L if block. So save this program and re-execute it. So now defaultly, the else block only would be executed. The value of A is not equal to 5 or equal to 8. The else block is being executed. In this way, we consider this particular thing, right? So now coming to the next topic. So in this way, we'll be dealing with the if condition, else conditions, and so on. So now coming to the next topic here, uh, I'm going to stop this uh, topic. Now what I'm doing here is, let us see the modules. So what are the modules? Why Python, how Python, let's see. So as we have gone with the keyboard module, as we have gone with the keyboard module, so we got the keywords, list of keywords. 
so in this way we are having the n number of modules so when we go with this let's go here uh, i'm executing a small program over here as soon as i execute this program you can see here as soon as i execute this program it says the system name the system name is so on the username is so on the version uh, when it is released what is a bit whether 32 bit or so on what is the processor when the system has been turned on so what is the system details with the multi core dual core what is the frequency what is the uh, frequency and the next one when you consider this particular thing right so look over here uh, i want to show you over here right so the system frequency the ram right so all the details of the system are being shown so in this way using the python modules we would be able to print the details right so the ram the system uh, disk information what is ip address right so what is a memory what is a mac address all these details would be printed when you go with the python so not only this uh, we do have the other programs let's see python space otp.py so when we execute so here it says you got an otp of so on so if i enter this particular otp so one two double eight five nine so as soon as I enter this it says uh you got so and so otp you have entered wrong otp so because i have entered wrong i know so i execute the program so one three six two zero four so it says you have entered the correct otp so in this way we do have n number of modules so if you go in depth about the python you would be having all these things right so here uh, let's look some other program have to send the mails so python space otp py so as soon as i click over here as soon as i click otp.py so what would be happen i'd be uh, i'd be able to get this program so i'll show you uh a mail would be dropped for me automatically as soon as i execute that particular program a mail would be dropped for me right you can look over here it says simply it says 53 uh 53 Three five. So if I enter this particular thing five three three five, it says correct OTP. You can look over here. It says correct uh, captcha. Like what are the program which you have considered, right? So I re-execute the program again. So now I'd be getting a mail again. So look over here. So let's come back and check. Now I'd be getting another mail, right? Right now I got another mail. So what does it say one zero three and eight zero two? So if I enter one zero three. One zero three, right? So one zero three eight two. So it says correct NDP. We can send. Uh, what we can do is we can send the mails. We can even uh, do much more operations. So getting the system details, OTPs, uh, so on. Are there? There are n number of modules. So if you look into these modules, we would be able to understand this. No oh, one doubt. Yes. How this OTP M uh, directly is connected to mail? Uh, there's a logical program behind this. We would be using the modules. We'd be using the modules over here. Uh, we do have a model uh, called as SMPT lib. When you use this SMPT module lib, so automatically what the program is generated over here that could be sent to the mail. That can be sent to a mail. So if you have gone to the previous program. So here I've showed you a normal program. Right now otp.py. Right now the OTP is being printed here. What are the topic which has printed here? That simply without printing here, I'm mailing to my mail ID. Required mail ID I've given there. For that mail ID, this concept is being mailed. So as soon as I enter the OTP, it says right OTP or else wrong OTP. So it says you have entered a wrong OTP. In this way, we'd be going with it. Right? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Yeah. So now going to the next topic over here. Like not only this modules, we do have many other modules. So what are those modules? I'll show you. Uh, so uh, let me show you program keylogger. Keylogger. Yeah. So here's a simple program called as keylogger. So when you go with keylogger, what would be happen? You would be able to. 
So like we have importing a module called as keyboard, SMPT, lib, and so on. So this three li uh, things I'm importing this program, like importing the libraries. So as soon as I import this library, what I'm doing over here, I'm creating my function. Like this is what the coding. So what the simple this program will do is for every 10 seconds, for every 10 seconds, whatever the user is being typed, let us consider if I've executed this program in one particular system. So what are the key emails typing? Let us consider some www.google.com or facebook.com or some high. What are the text is typing? All the things, what are the key you're pressing in the keyboard? A single key, whatever you're pressing, all the keys would be stored into one file called as log file. If you look over here, a file would be their log file, right? A file called as log. All this would be generated into a log file for every 10 minutes, like a file called as log. All the things which have uh, pressed for 10 minutes, for each and every 10 minutes, thus fi that file would be sent to so and so mail. That file would be sent to so and so mail. So, what would be happen? The people who are going with the hacking kind of things, they use this keylogger program to get the user credentials. Whether the user details what is typing, what is which website is going, what is the username you have entered, what is the message you have entered, all these details would be sent to so and so mail. So, in this way, the keylogger would be used for the Python. Not only this, we do have many other modules in the uh, Python, the NumPy module, uh, Pandas, Matplotlib, Seaborn, Skykit, and so on. N number of modules are there. So all these modules, if we go with it, each and every other work we can perform, data visualization, data pre-processing, all these things we can consider, right? So if you want to know more about these details, uh, we'll let you know, right? So in this way, when you, uh, like, this is what they got the Python. Right. If you want to know about all these four modules, uh, like we are even providing the internships, right? So if you join with the internship, all the other modules, all the other models which are there, we can explain in detail about that in the internship program. All right. So as of now, if you people have any other, have, anyone have doubts, you can ask me. Yes, we can send the OTPs to someone else's mail. So the pro based upon the program, we can send it. Based upon the program which you have written, we can even send to someone else mail ID also. Right now, uh, as of now, I'm done with the session. If the people, anyone have uh, are having doubts, you can ask me over here. I'd be replying it. Do anyone are having doubts? Mahesh, I think everyone is clear without yeah. any doubts, I think so. Yeah, Guys okay. who are watching this on YouTube can stay back for the doubts. We will be sharing you Google link, Google Meet link so that you can ask your doubts at the end. Sir, uh, Vijay Lakshmi is asking a doubt. Immutable. Uh, it is simply what we can do is we can't change that. One thing which, which cannot be changed, it is called as immutable. So it would be done like when we are going with the tuples list set tuples and it will be there in that concept we'll be able to go in depth about this mutable and immutable someone are asking how to apply the internship uh, in online if you want to apply the internship in online simply go to uh, www.brainovision.in slash internships then uh, internships will be displayed so if you go to over here so the internships which are uh, gonna give over here, so all these internships, the details would be given. You can log into this portal and check. Yeah, so some other thoughts is this internship is free or for the free, sir. So you have the details over here. Uh, please log into the portal. All the details should be mentioned over here. We'll be sending the link again with your certificate also. You can check it out there. Sir, one doubt. Yes, ma'am. Sir, in case of tuple, even if you can't able to add by append, but when we use plus operator, it is going to change. Then can we call it as immutable? So basically, uh, we can call it as an immutable. But what would happen is if we take in depth about that, we can even uh, specify like this plus symbol can't be worked. We can even uh, write a program like this plus, sim uh, plus symbol which are using the operator. 
Okay. That cannot, can't also be worked. We can write in that way. There is a logic. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, still any other doubts, anyone of you? Yes, sir, I think we can close now. Yeah, it's okay. Thank you, everyone. Uh, Thank you for your valuable time. It's a wonderful session with you people. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Mahesh, sir. It was you. an excellent session. So guys, you will be receiving your certificates by the end of the day and we'll provide uh, internship details and the link to register in that uh, mail itself. And you can also register to our upcoming workshops uh, on DART, which is uh, completely free of cost. We'll send that link to uh, in the, with the certificates itself. So you can check there. Uh, and also uh, we can call out uh, faculties who are willing to interact with the interact in the session good morning and all good morning ma'am i just want to say a lot of thanks ma'am on behalf of our mgat yes ma'am very good man very good morning all i am mr sultana i stand professor csc coordinator for this workshop would like to present what are plans on behalf of Department of Computer Science and Engineering, Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technology. I take an opportunity to thank Brainovision Solutions, India Private Limited team for your quick cooperation on arranging this session. I'm also very much thankful to our management for encouraging us in conducting this workshop. I express my gratitude to our principal, Professor. K. Jayashankar Garu for his support. Thank you very much, sir. I also express my sincere gratitude to our head of the department, Professor T.R.K. Reddy Garu for his encouragement, guidance, and continuous support for his extent us for conducting this workshop within short period of time. Thank you very much, sir. I also extend my I also extend my thanks to my fellow faculty coordinator, Ms. K. Sirisha, assistant professor, CSC, for her continuous cooperation in organizing this workshop. Thank you, ma'am. Last but not the least, we are thankful for the participants, for your participation with great enthusiasm. Thank you. Thank you, one and all. Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, Ma'am, can I give my vote of thanks on behalf of KL University of Yes, ma'am. Yes. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, good morning, one and all. This is uh, Sri Devi from uh, KL University of Um It's my privilege to give vote of thanks uh, to all of you on behalf of KL University of and uh, on behalf of Department of uh, Computer Engineering. Um, I sincerely give my thanks to Brain Innovation team who had uh, given their valuable information and sharing their uh, info, sharing the valuable uh, information of different technologies uh, to all the students and all the faculty. Uh, I would like to thank uh, my management uh, for uh, encouraging us to arrange such a wonderful, uh, useful sessions uh, to students as well as faculty. And I would like to thank to the registrar, Dr. Y.V. V. S. Garu, our principal, Dr. K. Subarao Garu, our dean of academics, Dr. N. Venkatram Garu, and uh, our below HOD sir, Dr. M. Sivaganga Prasad Garu, for giving us the uh, encouragement uh, to arrange such uh, useful sessions for our students. And finally, I would like to thank our co coordinator for. Uh, Dr. M. Ramesh Kumar Garu, Dr. A. Kiran Kumar Garu, and N. Srinivasalu, sir, and uh, all the faculty who are supporting us to arrange such useful sessions. Sir. And finally, I would like to thank all the students who had uh, participated uh, in this session 
and uh, finally once again i would like to uh, thank the prino vision total team along with uh, mahesh garu thank you so much ma'am thank you so much ma'am hello ma'am i would like to present a vote of thanks from bharat institute of engineering and technology yes sir thank you ma'am so good morning one and all uh, on behalf of uh, bharat institute of engineering and technology it's my privilege to present vote of thanks first of all let me express my sincere gratitude for our beloved chairman sir ch venu gopal reddy garu uh, who will continuously encourage us motivate motivators to conduct such type of uh, workshops and uh, i would like to extend my thanks to our uh, principal sir dr ram babu garu uh, and uh, our hod sir dr madan mohan garu and our academic in charge uh, shailaja and my team uh, munshekar and akilesh and all my colleagues of csc and it departments i would like to extend a special thanks to entire brain wizard team especially the technical speaker mahesh sir who made the entire session in more informative and practical oriented and also the technical team who continuously coordinated with us for, for their uh, continuous uh, efforts in making this workshop grand success finally i thank all the participants as no program can become successful with a single person so ex so i extend my big thank to each and every one who took a part in this workshop to make it grand success thank you one and all thank you thank you so much sir Uh, yes, madam. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Yeah, madam. I am Harish Kumar, uh, head HOD from CSC Department, Saint Mary's Engineering College. I just, I would like to say my sincere thanks to all the persons who are involved in this event. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, Mr. Bala Mahesh Garu, the resource person. Uh, really, he presented all the Python concepts very neat and clear manner. And uh, next, I would like to thanks. Uh, CEO Brino Vision, Dr. Mr. Ganesh Garu. Uh, yes, sir. You please continue, sir. Yeah, I would like to thank our director, management, Saint Mary's Group of Institutions. Okay, thank you, madam. Thank you all. Thank you, thank you so much, sir. Yes, uh, we would like to thank Kota Harish Kumar sir from Saint Mary's Engineering College, mm, Srinivas Lu sir from KL University, Narsim Lu sir from Bharat Institute of uh, Engineering and Technology, and Sultana Ma'am from Mahatma Gandhi Institute of Technology for your con constant support in organizing this workshop. Thank you so much, Anandal. Mahesh sir. Yeah, Mona. Sir, uh, we are sharing Google Meet link in the YouTube chat so that uh, students who are there, uh, if they are having any doubts, they will be coming and they will be asking here, sir. Yeah, thank you. Yes. Yes, sir. 